we have cultural activities in this museum. And I'm very happy for this uh, collaboration around the Georgian culture topic that we will experience today. Uh, often, the cultural activities in this museum are connected to the main subject of our collections, and it's about Swedish royal history. Telling the royal history sometimes sounds like a fairy tale, although it's all true, as in this case. Once upon a time, in the 17th century, King Charles XI sent an embassy to Persia to get the Silk Road turned into the Baltic Sea. This route passed through Russia, uh, southwards along the rivers, passing the Caspian Sea, a trade route much the same as the old Vikings had used to get close to ancient riches, not least the shining fabrics of silk. In the 1680s, passing through the Caucasian area, the delegates to the Swedish embassy had to look also for other sources of interest. Scholars of the time wanted to collect testimonies of the roots of Swedish nation. At that time, the generally accepted belief was that the Goths were the forefathers of the Swedes through Margok, the grandson of Noah, who, according to the Holy Bible, had stranded the ark on Mount Ararat in southern Caucasus. During those efforts to establish the Silk Road to Sweden, also Georgians became a topic of interest at the Swedish court. Through a chain of coincidences, at last, a Georgian prince, Alexander of Bagration, appeared in Stockholm. He came as a war prisoner after the outbreak of the Great Nordic War and the Battle of Narva. You will find uh, traces of this story in a small exhibition downstairs, so in the deepest part of the museum. Remember that. Don't miss it. <laughs> Have a short look while you take part in what will now follow. A most wonderful program designed by Youth Ambassador of Georgia, Nacha Dorji Kapanitse. Please, now Nacha, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. Um, today is a very special day. A special day not because that I'm standing here, but a special day that I'm going to represent one of the genius, Georgian genius, whom we are proud of very much. So I want to start with the thank you that you are here, and I have the honor to stand in front of you at this time, at this place. I really feel pleasure to this, such a noble uh, company I have today. Uh, as many of you already know, I'm a young ambassador of Georgia. Uh, this is the, I'm the representative of the project initiated by the uh, Ministry of the Diaspora Issues of Georgia. And the project aims, first of all, to promote the Georgian culture, history, economy, literature among them, uh, and abroad in the countries where we are assigned the new young ambassadors. So here I am accomplishing my mission, today going to represent the Georgian literature. But before we start, uh, I also want to be honest and kind of excuse us that I really feel very nervous. This is the first time I have never ever before felt so happy and excited and uh, nervous all at the same time. I'm happy to see you everyone here, but on the other side I feel so much nervous because I am really responsible towards you and towards, first of all, the genius I'm going to represent, Shota Rustavelli. And it's really not an easy thing. The book, which is heavier, heavy not because the book is very heavy, but the responsibility what I feel towards him. Um, now I will tell you a little bit history why this, from where the inspiration came. Um, unfortunately, not only Rustavelli's name is unfamiliar to the world and the world readers and among them the Swedes, but as I found out, the Georgian literature is unfamiliar to the Swedish society and the readers. Four years ago, I was also the part of the project uh, which was funded by the European Union's Eastern Partnership. And I conducted a research uh, searching for the first Georgian literature which was translated in Swedish. 
And not surprisingly, well, badly for me, but not surprisingly, I could find just only three books. Not, and after that, the past four years, but not a lot has changed. Maybe now you can find in the libraries like maximum six, seven books. So I felt that if we are telling that Sweden and Georgia has the cultural relationships, what could be the better? What could be the better way to introduce the nations each other to learn about them is just the way to read them. So I thought that, okay, here's the anniversary of such a poet, let's use the chance. I'm an ambassador, here is the anniversary, and here is the reason. So I came up to Anne, and yeah, she, of course, believed in me, and so here I am. Uh, well, the book, The Night in the Panther's Skin, which is regarded as the central work of the Georgian literary canon, is a literary, uh, it's a canonical text on which stands, I think, the whole of Georgian literature. The book and the poet I'm talking about, George Shotarus Kavelli, he was born in 12th century. And uh, just we have all the assumptions about him. Unfortunately, we don't know about him a lot. Uh, as uh, it's believed, he has been serving on the King Tamaras, or Queen, actually she was Queen, but already in 12th century we had King, Queen Tamara, and uh, he was uh, serving on, uh, at her court. And it's assumed also that he was madly in love with Queen Tamara, but unfortunately because of the social status, she couldn't, they couldn't have any relation. So, and it's believed that the book is the dedication to his immortal love and to his muse, I can say, Queen Tamara. Uh, and what is the unique about this book and uh, that the world has not yet discovered? That you know that Italians, they have Dante, the divine comedy. Germans have uh, Faust, of course, uh, or English, and they are proud of their Shakespeare. And Ruskavelli is the same for us and for the world, I think. But unfortunately, because of the language, not everyone knows about him. Uh, despite the fact that the book was written 800 years ago, I can say that he was the even more progressive than some politicians or some writers today. Because already in the 12th century, he was writing about the issues, what is so relevant and for today's 21st century. I mean, gender equality, uh, that the most important value is human being itself. There is no difference between races or ethnicity or the social status. The most important is the relationship between the humans that if my friend or even foe needs my help, I have to be there. So it doesn't matter if he is from the other land, he is from the other, other country, or if he is stranger, if he needs me, I'm there. So um, that's why I'm proud of him, that already in 12th century we had such a poet. And many of you, I think that, and many times have heard that uh, we Georgians now already celebrated this year 26 of the, uh, 26 years anniversary of independence, and many of you will hear that Georgians are striving to get back to the European culture, European family. Maybe many of you also assume and uh, think that when have you ever been the, in the family? What, what, where is the evidence? Well, and I think that this book and this poet is the evidence and will be the passport for the Georgians to show them that this is the values, this is the thing what we have been thinking and which is very same, equal with the European values. So I think that this should be the passport for the Georgians to get in the European Union and show them that here we are, we have been thinking about these things, and we're, we're, we have been in the family of European culture.
culture and European traditions, Western traditions. And uh, what is also significant with this book is that um, uh, it gives everyone, each and every reader, depending on their ability or depending on his or her education, gives something really thoughtful. And I mean that if someone is in love with the uh, Greek philosophy, Latin philosophy, so here is the book, you can find that. Or if someone is young and like enthusiastic of heroic stuff, so you will find that. So this is very unique book, I think, that for every age there is something in it. And uh, even me, every time I read it, I will read it, I find more and more things. As the older I get, the more wisdom I see in it. So I'm really proud that I'm the ancestor of this, not the ancestor, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, so he is my ancestor, that I'm his continuing the gene, Georgian gene. So, uh, and finally, <laughs> at the end of my speech, uh, I'm really proud today to be the hostess of the translator, Miss Lynn Coffin, who I'm really grateful that who did a really a great job, that now Western people, English-speaking people, can read this book, the book which I'm proud so much and which, on which I have been talking right now, that this is really good translation, which has been now awarded as the best translation and uh, as the most, like the closest to the original version. And uh, when you read it, you feel the with melody. So not only wisdom comes, but you will get the pleasure reading the literature. So I would like now uh, Miss Lynn Coughlin to come and take this in and uh, they could have, uh, we today prepared the stage reading uh, to create more, to give you more impression what is really good about. And uh, I would like Lynn and Matthias to get on the scene and show the audience to help. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I, I'll have more to say about the translation, but I thought it would be a way to introduce a, a short scene from near the beginning of the book, where uh, Optin Deal has been sent by his beloved Tina Dean to find the knight in the panther skin. And uh, she says she loves him, but she won't marry him until he solves the mystery of this strange person. And so he's been searching for almost three years, and that's the time he's been given, and he manages to track the knight in the panther skin to his refuge in the mountain caves. And he discovers that this knight is with a, a senior female companion, Asma, and uh, he decides and waits until Tario leaves, and then he approaches the cave. Maiden, please be calm. I wish you no harm. Don't take me for a knave. Is Tario the knight you just left? It's his life story, I crave. I have seen him cypressed form and shining face, the rosy cheek and brave. Don't be afraid. Tell me his tale, to reply that his time is in grave. If you are mad, seek reason. And if you are not, then let me be. This is no easy matter, this boon you so lightly ask of me. Don't ask me to tell this tale. This, this thing you ask for cannot be. Oh, knight, do you know what it is you ask of me? I say again, the story of that other knight cannot be written by the pen. To the plea, tell me, I'll say no, though it be to a hundred men. I prefer silent grief to saying what you clearly cannot can. 
Maiden, you don't know where I come from, or the sorrows I have seen. For a long time I sought news of you, but no tidings could I bring. Now I found you, and no matter what hurt to you my words may mean, I won't let you go till you say what you know, even though you're keen. I am nothing but a humble servant. What is that to you? You've caught me now because the sun is not near. Isn't that true? Long discourse is tedious, so the words I give you will be few. I won't tell you the tale you want to hear, no matter what you do. How can I forgive you when you express so much ill will? You make me weep. Shall they be in vain than these tears you made me spill? It is better for you to tell me and to suffer no further ill. If not, may God kill my enemies as I now am made and kill. The death you have in mind for me is savage and cruel. You'd make a maiden hale and hearty bleed out in a bloody pool. To tell you anything before I'm released would mark me as a fool. And people who are headless do not answer questions as a rule. Who exactly do you think I am? What evil fate drove you here? I won't tell you the tale you want to hear. As long as I live, is that clear? I would rather willingly let you kill me and die without fear. Let you tear me up like a useless letter penned by someone dear. Do you think death is a suffering from which I'm trying to keep? Death for me would be a freedom, the freedom from having to weep. The world to me is no more than a bale of straw. I hold it cheap. I don't know you. Why should I speak to you of matters I hold deep? I know that I have proven myself unworthy of a sister's trust. Since I have angered you and stayed a stranger, reject me as you must. I put myself, though, at your mercy, humble at your feet like dust. For it is said, repentant sinners are forgiven by the just. Though at the start I did not show any benevolence to you, yet as a lover I can still claim your pity. Is it not true? This is my only defense. All other defenses I eschew. I give you my life and shake of my heart. What more can I do? You know, lovers are pitied even by those who are wielding spears. You know too a lover seeks death. When death draws nigh, a lover cheers. I am a lover, a madman, living a life I cannot bear. My son told me to find that knight and to bring him with me back there. Even a cloud could not reach some of the places I dare to dare. That you're dedicated to him and he to you, I'm aware. His face was imprinted by, on my heart by the one I hoped to wed. Seeking him brought me no joy, but sorrows upon sorrows instead. Make me your captive or tell me the story for which I have fled. Either grant me your life. Or add me grief to my grief and leave me for death. It is better to speak of love openly as you do now with passion and art. Before your speaking did nothing but sow enmity in my heart. Now you have made of me a friend, ready to play a sister's part. Since you have now spoken openly of love, which before you hid, because of your loving words, I'll serve you, despite what you first did. I shall devote myself to you. Of sadness, I shall see you rid. I'll die for your sake, if I don't find a way.
to do as you bid. wrote to me and said that he had read what I had written of Joseph Brodsky and he wanted to know more about me. We began to correspond. Then he found out that I translated from other languages, including Czech, and he sent me some poems in Georgian with the Bitskarity, the word for word, underneath. I think the first one was made by Chav Chavadze. And and sitting at the computer, I translated it, sent it back, and then he said, these are wonderful translations and we want to bring you to Georgia, and we want to do an anthology of Georgian poetry in English. So he did. I went to Georgia, not knowing a soul in Georgia, not even having an address, and uh, we became good friends and did this Georgian anthology. So the first day, I remember the apartment in Tbilisi, and I was teaching at Ilya University, and he said, okay, so we have to start our anthology with Shota Rustavelli. I said, who is Shota Rustavelli? And his words, which, some people quarrel with, he said he's, he was a 12th century monk. And I thought, oh God, uh, the idea of starting an anthology with a 12th century monk, I pictured a lot of theology, everybody bored, nobody interested. And then he began to read to me the Georgian. And I immediately heard the sound. My heart just leapt up to hear this great sound. And then he did the Biscardi word for word. He began to tell me the story. And I was electrified by the story. But there was still one task, so then I went and looked at what had been translated into English. And my personal opinion, I didn't like any of the translations at all, really. They, they didn't capture for me the poetry, and I thought to myself, I can do better than this. So I, t I expressed this dream of translating this whole work to a Georgian poet, Dato Barbakadze, and instead of saying, yeah, that's a lovely dream, he said, okay, good, I'll find a publisher. And then he went and he talked to his friend, Nato Ahazashvili, about he was looking for a publisher, and she said, I'll, I'll be the publisher. So she put her own money, she formed a company, she got representatives, and she paid me to translate this wonderful work, and it, it, was, it was amazing to me. And what, what did I know about it? I, it's, not you always refer to it, but it's a story of four people, some say five, but two knights and the women that they love. The men, for me, I was raised on King Arthur and his knights, and those knights are very stoical. These knights are not stoical. They're very much in touch with their feminine nature. They cry, they scratch their cheeks, they're very emotional, and the women are very much in touch with their masculine nature. They order their men to go and kill their bridegrooms. They tell them to leave for two years. You know, when, when Optin Dill says how much he loves Tina Tin, her response is, yes, that's great, and I love you too, so now please go and find this, the story of this other night. So she gives him a very difficult task. So I love that, I love the story, and I would translate it chapter by chapter, so that every, with every chapter I wanted to read the next, so that I could keep the suspense, and I didn't know how it would turn out until the very end. I love the aphorisms in Rustavelli, right in the middle of all this action, there are these wonderful aphorisms. And the one about the lion, that the lion's whelps are equal they be, though male or female they be. So it's the wonderful expressions in aphorisms. And the music, and I translated it into, I felt it had to be translated into shiary, which is what Rustavelli wrote in. Sixteen syllable lines rhymed A, 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 B, 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 B. It took me almost three years, between two and a half and three years. And it made a disciplined poet out of me. I tend not to be very disciplined, but every day I would do this. And I look forward to it in general. So I wanted to read this one. We have elections coming up in Georgia. And we have elections coming up in the United States. And one of my favorite passages in Rustavellian was very, one of the most difficult was uh, near the end when he describes this uh, just government. And it's difficult because it has all these terms that have to be rendered. And I'm gonna, I have glasses that have lost one thing, so it's a little hard. <laughs> but 
he describes this ideal situation, the ideal society. And it's full of nouns, so it's very hard. I don't know if you know, Georgian has fewer words than English. English has many, many more words, but Georgian has more rhymes than English. So it made it even harder. But this is full of the nouns and full of his vision of what a good government should be. Their kingly mercy was given to all. It fell like endless snow. The poor stopped begging. Widows felt safe. And orphans were helped to grow. Evil doers were scared. Their ewes had lambs, but no milk to bestow. In the realm of their kingdoms, the goat with the wolf could safely go. And what, what I love most about that is this idea of the evil doers had, had ewes, they had lambs, but no milk to bestow. So in other words, yes, people still did evil, but it didn't continue, it didn't go on, because there was no way for it, it just went there and stopped. And I've never forgotten that idea of that we have lambs, but no milk to bestow. So I wanted to ask if you have questions or um, ideas, comments, or anything that you would like to say or contribute before we move toward a closing. At least one brave soul. <laughs> you know, maybe I don't know how well you know the tale. Um, you know this. Uh, the tale, like it, for me, it began. Well, I'll just say one other thing. That the, the story begins. Uh, well, the prologue. Tario talks about being in love with Queen King Tamar, but the only queen in history, and they called her King Tamar because she was so warlike. I, to me, this is like calling her King Betsy or something. It's just this wonderful thing of a king with a woman's name. And he talks about how it's a little intimidating to be in love with a woman whom, if you irritate her, she might not only kill you, but kill your family, kill your village, kill the whole region, and thousands of men could die if, if something's put her in this bad state. So it gives a personal touch that all this tale that he's telling, he has a personal investment in. And the, the story begins when the king gives his kingdom to his daughter. So there's King Tamar again. And as any English one schooled in Shakespeare, of course, I think of King Lear. And it's wonderful that in this case, he chose wisely. She is a good ruler. She's the one he should give it to. And who else is he going to give it to? And so um, it starts right away with this thing of what's going to happen when the king gives his kingdom away. And I really recommend those of you who read it long ago to read it again. And um, one of the nicest things, I'll, I'll close by saying, when I was in Tbilisi recently and, and I got the Saba prize, I, was, I, I arrived the same day as I got the prize, which was an amazing experience. But the nicest thing was talking to Georgians about the events in the night in the panther skin and discussing possible interpretations and it became sort of a, a living conversation with uh, georgian intellectuals and non-intellectual readers and i told them which is true that for me when i go home my grandchildren aging in eight to 14 they always want to know more about the night in the panther skin and that encourages me a great deal so thank you for coming and i will turn the floor back to you from the Ministry of Desperations oh, okay. for your uh, out, uh, outrageous work that you have done for the Georgian literature, oh, okay. the Georgian literature. and uh, as you know you have found the books in the entrance after the event, after this closing, you have the possibility to get the books signed by the lean and because of that I'm giving you the oh, rating okay. <laughs> of Stockholm 2016 and I hope you will always be remembering yes. this event. So, so I didn't have to go scrounging up all the point. No, 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 no. It's a special. Thank you very like much. A convenient for the 12th century. Yeah, we did such a great job. And thanks a lot uh, for being
being such a great audience. And uh, I have a pleasure now to, after this uh, event, as I told you, you can get the books, and then you are invited warmly at the mingle, and we will serve Georgian wine and cheese, and of course, not last but not the least, you will have the possibility to see the exhibition. Uh, very unique illustrations, you can, uh, a very unique uh, illustrations from the manuscript. As you know, the book was written in the 12th century, and of course it wasn't published, and it was written and rewritten and rewritten by the monks themselves. So the oldest uh, manuscript, uh, which, has, we, which we have right now, is from the 16th <coughs> century and the 17th, but the oldest is from the 16th, like at the 15th century. So I have the possibility to get the total copies of those manuscripts, and you have the possibility, of course, to see them and uh, see the heritage of the UNESCO that it has been included <coughs> in the uh, list of the UNESCO three years ago as the World Heritage. <coughs> so thank you again and you are welcome. And Zalian Mishalovani Roni Zeba Iqo, Zalian Sajiro, Kansa Kutrebi, Sakarto Lostuizda, Mero Gortz, Gat Sulu Akhla Danish Nurelchi, Bedniari Varo, Vart Gesaka, Tsarmu Adgen, Im Sam Shoblos, Im Kekhanas, Romel Mats, Ukhechat Rotkot, Shoba, Eseti Geniosi, Adamiani Romelitz, Romelitz Shemok Medebats, Romelitz Khelovnebats, Soplio Sekut Mizdes, Iqo, Erterti Nabiji, Gotsa Chwentkot, Ghez, Shwet, Smenel, Shwet, Magurebel, Shwet, Kitkhel, Shwet, Tumars, Gawatsanit, is genial for the Nazarmabi. I'm the Nazalian Vedner Rewarder, Minda Seven Matlovagada Gehadut, Quen, Chem Sahalgas, the Collegas, Am Sakmian of Isa Twisda, that's on Evolivaro, Meskid of Gagzel de Vada, Chatoletro, Chet Quen's Gordit, we can have it. The importance of building bridges between our cultures, and then literature is a very important. Almost a cornerstone in order to make this bridge work. So I'm very proud and very honored to have been published some of your excellent short stories and would, of course, like to pursue this idea of publishing more literature from Georgia. Uh, well, I'm honored to be here tonight uh, for this occasion for this uh, new English uh, translation of this very, as I understand, very important book. And I think it's, it's a real, uh, well, it's a great occasion, really. It's, uh, and your impressions, I just was in my mind in the, our parallel history, history of Georgia and Ukraine. We had also the heroic poems on which Ukrainian nation was built. And you as a Georgian also has your, you also have your uh, heroic poem and, uh, poems on which your history and your Proudness is built. So, and this this is like a parallel history that we, as a nation, Ukraine and Georgia, was constructed in the same time with the same uh, with the same uh, ways. I would say. So we have literature which made us to be nation. Ustavelli is now accessible to English speakers in the modern times. And uh, I'm happy to be in Sweden. So grateful to Natia Lorte Kapanitza to have invited me to come and talk. Uh, I think the scene we acted out, people said that they understood the music of the language and they got some idea of the drama and now they're excited to read the epic. So 
That was also wonderful. I'm going to pick up from process. Madubamida Gada Hadu Sakatu Salchus, Harda Jaris Twist, the Soviet Hitol Chemegobers in Sabolum de Harshi Medga, the Esponisieba Matida Horebichetka.